Maze Man Reuben of the 83rd level, Atomist, knew there was something wrong when the binoculars flashed and then went opaque. Inwardly, he cursed, hoping that he had not committed himself to anything. Outwardly, he was unperturbed. He handed the binoculars back to Rudolph's man, Alman, of the 89th level, Maintainer, with a smile. They aren't very good, he said. Alman put them to his own eyes, glanced over the parapet, and swore mildly. Blacker than the heart of a crazy angel, eh? Never mind, here's another pair. This pair was unremarkable. Through it, Reuben studied the thousand setbacks and penthouses of Denv that ranged themselves below. He was too worried to enjoy his first sight of the vista from the 89th level, but he let out a murmur of appreciation. Now to get away from this suddenly sinister fellow and try to puzzle it out. Couldn't we? he asked cryptically, with a little upward jerk of his chin. It's better not to, Alman said hastily, taking the glasses from his hands. What if somebody with stars happened to see, you know? How'd you like if you saw some impudent fellow peering up at you? He wouldn't dare, said Reuben, pretending to be stupid and indignant, and joined a moment later in Alman's sympathetic laughter. Never mind, said Alman. We are young. Someday, who knows, perhaps we shall look from the 95th level or the 100th. Though Reuben knew that the maintainer was no friend of his, the generous words sent blood hammering through his veins. Ambition for a moment. He pulled a long face and told Alman, Let us hope so. Thank you for being my host. Now I must return to my quarters. He left the windy parapet for the serene luxury of an 89th level corridor and descended slow moving stairs through gradually less luxurious levels to his own Spartan floor. Celine was waiting, smiling as he stepped off the stairs. She was decked out nicely. Too nicely. She wore a steely-hued corselet and a touch of scent. Her hair was dressed long. The combination appealed to him, and instantly he was on his guard. Why had she gone to the trouble of learning his tastes? What was she up to? After all, she was Griffin's woman. Coming down? she asked, awed. Where have you been? The 89th, as a guest of that fellow, Alman. The vista is immense. I've never been she murmured, and then said decisively, "'You belong up there and higher. Griffin laughs at me, but he's a fool. Last night in chamber we got to talking about you. I don't know how, and he finally became quite angry and said he didn't want to hear another word.' She smiled wickedly. "'I was revenged, though.' Blank-faced, he said, "'You must be a good hand at revenge, Celine, and at stirring up the need for it.' The slight hardening of her smile meant that he had scored, and he hurried by with a rather formal salutation. Burn him for an Angelo, but she was easy enough to take. The contrast of the metallic garment with her soft white skin was disturbing, and her long hair suggested things. It was hard to think of her as scheming something or other. Scheming Celine was displaced in his mind by Celine in chamber. But what was she up to? Had she perhaps heard that he was to be elevated? Was Griffin going to be swooped on by the maintainers? Was he to kill off Griffin so she could leech on to some rising third party? Was she perhaps merely giving her man a touch of the lash? He wished gloomily that the binoculars problem and the Selene problem had not come together. That trickster Alman had spoken of youth as though it was something for congratulation, he hated being young and stupid and unable to puzzle out the faulty binoculars and the warmth of Griffin's woman. The attack alarm roared through the Spartan corridor. He ducked through the nearest door into a vacant bedroom and under the heavy steel table. Somebody else floundered under the table a moment later, and a third person tried to join them. The first comer roared, "'Get out and find your own shelter. I don't propose to be crowded out by you or to crowd you out either and see your ugly blood and brains if there's a hit. Go now!' "'Forgive me, sir. At once, sir,' the latecomer wailed, and scrambled away as the alarm continued to roar. Reuben gasped at the sirs and looked at his neighbor. It was May, trapped, no doubt, on an inspection tour of the level. "'Sir,' he said respectfully, "'if you wish to be alone, I can find another room. You may stay with me for company. Are you one of mine?' There was power in the general's voice and on his craggy face. "'Yes, sir.' Maze Man Reuben of the 83rd level, Atomist. 
May surveyed him, and Reuben noted that there were pouches of skin, depending from cheekbones and the jawline, dead-looking, coarse, poured skin. "'You're a well-made boy, Reuben. Do you have women?' Uh, "'Yes, sir,' said Reuben, hastily. "'One after another. I always have women. I'm making up at this time to a charming thing called Celine. Well-rounded, yet firm, soft but supple, with long red hair and long white legs. Spare me the details,' muttered the general. "'It takes all kinds. An atomist, you know. That is a future, to be sure. I myself was a controller long ago. The calling seems to have gone out of fashion.' Abruptly, the alarm stopped. The silence was hard to bear. May swallowed and went on. For some reason or other, why don't youngsters elect for a controller anymore? Why didn't you, for instance? Reuben wished he could be saved by a direct hit. The binoculars, Celine, the raid, and now he was supposed to make intelligent conversation with a general. I really don't know, sir, he said miserably. At the time, there seemed to be very little difference. Controller, atomist, missiler, maintainer. We have a saying, the buttons are different which usually ends any conversation on the subject. Indeed? asked May distractedly. His face was thinly filmed with sweat. Do you suppose Eli intends to clobber us this time? he asked, almost hoarsely. It's been some weeks since they made a maximum effort, hasn't it? Four, said Reuben. I remember because one of my best servers was killed by a falling corridor roof. The only fatality, and it had to happen to my team. He laughed nervously and realized that he was talking like a fool, but May seemed not to notice. Far below them there was a series of screaming whistles as the interceptors were loosed to begin their intricate double basketwork wall of defense in a towering cylinder about Denv. "'Go on, Reuben,' said May. "'That was most interesting.' His eyes were searching the underside of the steel table. Reuben averted his own eyes from the frightened face, feeling some awe drain out of him under a table with a general. It didn't seem so strange now. Perhaps, sir, you can tell me what a puzzling thing that happened this afternoon means. A fellow Rudolph's man, Elman of the 89th level, gave me a pair of binoculars that flashed in my eyes and then went opaque. Has your wide experience... May laughed hoarsely and said in a shaky voice, <laughs> that old trick? He was photographing your retinas for the blood vessel pattern. What a Rudolph's man, huh? I'm glad you spoke to me. I'm old enough to spot a revival like that. Perhaps my good friend Rudolph plans... There was a thudding volley in the air and then a faint jar. One had gotten through, exploding from the feel of it, far down at the foot of Denv. The alarm roared again, in bursts that meant all clear, only one flight of missiles, and that disposed of. The atomist and the general climbed out from under the table. May's secretary popped through the door. The general waved him out again and leaned heavily on the table, his arms quivering. Reuben hastily brought a chair. "'A glass of water,' said May. The atomist brought it. He saw the general wash down what looked like a triple dose of triple X, green capsules which it was better to leave alone. May said after a moment, "'That's better. And don't look so shocked, youngster. You don't know the strain we're under.' It's only a temporary measure which I shall discontinue as soon as things ease up a bit. I was saying that perhaps my good friend Rudolph plans to substitute one of his men for one of mine. Uh, tell me, how long has this fellow Alman been a friend of yours? He struck up an acquaintance with me only last week. I should have realized. You certainly should have. One week. Time enough and more. By now you've been photographed, your fingerprints taken, your voice recorded, and your gait studied without your knowledge. Only the retina scope's difficult, but one must risk it for a real double. Have you killed your man, Reuben? He nodded. It had been a silly brawl two years ago over precedence at the refectory. He disliked being reminded of it. Good, said May grimly. The way these things are done, your double kills you in a secluded spot disposes of your body and takes over your role. We shall reverse it. You will kill the double and take over his role. The powerful, methodical voice ticked off possibilities and contingencies, measures and countermeasures. Reuben absorbed them and felt his awe return. Perhaps it had been he reading his own terror in the general's face. He was actually talking to him of backgrounds and policies. Up from the 83rd level, he swore to himself as the great names were uttered. 
My good friend Rudolph, of course, wants the five stars. You would not know this, but the man who wears the stars is now 80 years old and failing fast. I consider myself a likely candidate to replace him. So, evidently, must Rudolph. No doubt he plans to have your double perpetrate some horrible blunder on the eve of the election, and the discredit would reflect on me. Now, what you and I must do... You and I. Maze man Reuben and May, up from the 83rd, up from the bare corridors and cheerless bedrooms to marble halls and vaulted chambers, from the clatter of the crowded refectory to small and glowing restaurants where you had your own table and servant and where music came softly from the walls, up from the scramble to win this woman or that by wit or charm or the poor bribes you could afford, to the eminence from which you could calmly command your pick of the beauty of Denv, from the moiling intrigue of tripping your fellow atomist and guarding against him tripping you to the heroic thrust and parry of generals, up from the 83rd. Then May dismissed him with a speech whose implications were deliriously exciting. I need an able man and a young one, Reuben. Perhaps I've waited too long looking for him. If you do well in this touchy business, I'll consider you very seriously for an important task I have in mind." Late that night, Celine came to his bedroom. "'I know you don't like me,' she said pettishly, "'but Griffin's such a fool, and I wanted somebody to talk to. Do you mind? What was it like up there today? Did you see carpets? I wish I had a carpet.' He tried to think about carpets and not the exciting contrast of metallic cloth and flesh. I saw one through an open door, he remembered. It looked odd, but I suppose a person gets used to them. Perhaps I didn't see a very good one. Aren't the good ones very thick? Yes, she said. Your feet sink into them. I wish I had a good carpet and four chairs and a small table as high as my knees to put things on and as many pillows as I wanted. Griffin's such a fool. Do you think I'll ever get those things? I've never caught the eye of a general." Am I pretty enough to get one, do you think?" He said uneasily, Of course you're a pretty thing, Celine, but carpets and chairs and pillows... It made him uncomfortable, like the thought of peering up through binoculars from a parapet. I want them, she said unhappily. I like you very much, but I want so many things, and soon I'll be too old even for the 83rd level, before I've been up higher and I'll spend the rest of my life tending babies or cooking in the creche or the refectory." She stopped abruptly, pulled herself together, and gave him a smile that was somehow ghastly in the half-light. "'You bungler,' he said, and she instantly looked at the door with the smile frozen on her face. Reuben took a pistol from under his pillow and demanded, "'When do you expect him?' "'What do you mean?' she asked shrilly. "'Who are you talking about?' "'My double. Don't be a fool, Celine. May and I, he savored it, May and I know all about it. He warned me to beware of a diversion by a woman while the double slipped in and killed me. When do you expect him? I really do like you, Celine sobbed, but Alman promised to take me up there, and I knew when I was there they'd see me that I'd meet somebody really important. I really do like you, but soon I'll be too old. Celine, listen to me. Listen to me. You'll get your chance. Nobody but you and me will know that the substitution didn't succeed. Then I'll be spying for you on Alman, won't I?" she asked in a choked voice. All I wanted was a few nice things before I got too old. All right. I was supposed to be in your arms at 2350 hours. It was 2349. Reuben sprang from bed and stood by the door, his pistol silenced and ready. At 2350, a naked man slipped swiftly into the room, heading for the bed as he raised a ten-centimeter poignard. He stopped in dismay when he realized that the bed was empty. Reuben killed him with a bullet through the throat. "'But he doesn't look a bit like me,' he said in bewilderment, closely examining the face. "'Just in a general way.' Celine said dully, "'Alman told me people always say that when they see their doubles. It's funny, isn't it?' He looks just like you, really. How is my body to be disposed of?" She produced a small, flat box. A shadow suit. You were to be left here and somebody would come tomorrow. We won't disappoint him. 
Reuben pulled the web of the shadow suit over his double and turned on the power. In the half-lit room, it was a perfect disappearance. By daylight, it would be less perfect. I'll ask why the body was shot instead of knifed. Tell them you shot me with the gun from under the pillow. Just say I heard the double come in and you were afraid there might have been a struggle. She listlessly asked, How do you know I won't betray you? You won't, Celine. His voice bit. You're broken. She nodded vaguely, started to say something, and then went out without saying it. Reuben luxuriously stretched in his narrow bed. Later his beds would be wider and softer, he thought. He drifted into sleep on a half-formed thought that someday he might vote with other generals on the man to wear the five stars, or even wear them himself, master of Denv. He slept healthily through the morning alarm and arrived late at his regular 20th level station. He saw a superior, May's man Oscar of the 85th level atomist, ostentatiously take his name. Let him. Oscar assembled his crew for a grim announcement. We're going to even the score, and perhaps a little better, with Elay. At sunset there will be three flights of missiles from Deck 1. There was a joyous murmur, and Reuben trotted off on his task. All forenoon he was occupied with drawing plutonium slugs from hyper-suspicious storekeepers in the great rock-quarried vaults, and seeing them through countless audits and assays all the way to weapons assembly. Oscar supervised the scores there, who assembled the curved slugs and the explosive lenses into 60-kilogram warheads. In mid-afternoon, there was an accident. Reuben saw Oscar step aside for a moment to speak to a maintainer whose guard fell on one of the assembly servers and dragged him away as he pleaded innocence. He had been detected in sabotage. When the warheads were in and the missilers seated, waiting at their boards, the two atomists rode up to the 83rd's refectory. The news of a near-maximum effort was in the air. It was electric. Reuben heard on all sides, in tones of self-congratulation, "'We'll clobber them tonight!' "'That server you caught,' he said to Oscar. "'What was he up to?' His commander stared. "'Are you trying to learn my job? Don't try it, I warn you. If my black marks against you aren't enough, I could always arrange for some fissionable material in your custody to go astray. No, no, I was just wondering why people do something like that.' Oscar sniffed doubtfully. "'He's probably insane, like all the Angelos. I've heard the climate does it to them. You're not a maintainer or a controller, why worry about it? They'll brain burn him, I suppose. I suppose. Listen. Deck one was firing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. People turned to one another and shook hands laughed and slapped shoulders heartily. Eighteen missiles were racing through the stratosphere, soon to tumble on Elay. With any luck, one or two would slip through the first wall of interceptors and blast close enough to smash windows and topple walls in the crazy city by the ocean. It would serve the lunatics right. Five minutes later, an exultant voice filled most of Denv. "'Recon missile report,' it said." Eighteen launched, eighteen perfect trajectories, fifteen shot down by Elay first-line interceptors, three shot down by Elay second-line interceptors. Extensive blast damage observed in Griffith Park area of Elay. There were cheers, and eight full maintainers marched into the refectory silently and marched out with Reuben. He knew better than to struggle or ask futile questions. Any question you asked of a maintainer was futile but he goggled when they marched him onto an upward-bound stairway. They rode past the 89th level and Reuben lost count, seeing only the marvels of the upper reaches of Denv. He saw carpets that ran the entire length of corridors, and intricate fountains and mosaic walls, stained glass windows, more wonders than he could recognize, things for which he had no name. He was marched at last into a wood-paneled room with a great polished desk and a map behind it. He saw May and another man who must have been a general, Rudolph. But sitting at the desk was a frail old man who wore a circlet of stars on each khaki shoulder. The old man said to Reuben, "'You are an Elay spy and saboteur.' Reuben looked at May. Did one speak directly to the man who wore the stars, even in reply to such an accusation? 
"'Answer him, Reuben,' May said kindly. "'I am a maze man, Reuben, of the thirty-third level, an atomist,' he said. "'Explain,' said the other general, heavily, "'if you can, why all eighteen of the warheads you procured today failed to fire.' "'But they did,' gasped Reuben. "'The recon missile report said there was blast damage from the three that got through, and it didn't say anything about the others failing to fire.' The other general suddenly looked sick, and May looked even kindlier. The man who wore the stars turned inquiringly to the chief of the maintainers, who nodded and said, "'That was the recon missile report, sir.' The general snapped. "'What I said was that he would attempt to sabotage the attack. Evidently he failed. I also said he is a faulty double, somehow slipped with great ease into my good friend May's organization. You will find that his left thumbprint is a clumsy forgery of the real Reuben's thumbprint and that his hair has been artificially darkened." The old man nodded at the chief of the maintainers, who said, "'We have his card, sir.' Reuben abruptly found himself being fingerprinted and deprived of some hair. "'The FPS check, sir,' one maintainer said. "'He's Reuben.' "'He's natural, sir,' said another. The general began a rear-guard action. My information about his hair seems to have been inaccurate, but the fingerprint means only that Ely spies substituted his prints for Reuben's prints in the files. Enough, sir, said the old man with the stars. Dismissed. All of you. Rudolph, I am surprised. All of you, go. Reuben found himself in a vast apartment with May, who was bubbling and chuckling uncontrollably until he popped three of the green capsules into his mouth hurriedly. This means the eclipse for years of my good friend Rudolph, he crowed. His game was to have you double sabotage the attack warheads and so make it appear that my organization is rotten with spies. The double must have been under post-hypnotic, primed to admit everything. Rudolph was so sure of himself he made the accusations before the attack. <laughs> the fool. He fumbled out the green capsules again. Uh, sir, said Reuben, alarmed. Only temporary. May muttered and swallowed a fourth. But you're right. You leave them alone. There are big things to be done in your time, not in mine. I told you I needed a young man who could claw his way to the top. Rudolph's a fool. He doesn't need the capsules because he doesn't ask questions. Funny. I thought a coup like the double affair would hit me hard, but I don't feel a thing. It's not like the old days. I used to plan and plan, and when the trap went snap, it was better than this stuff. But now I don't feel a thing." He leaned forward from his chair. The pupils of his eyes were black bullets. "'Do you want to work?' he demanded. "'Do you want your world stood on its head and your brains to crack and do the only worthwhile job there is to do? Answer me.' "'Sir, I am a loyal maze man. I want to obey your orders and use my ability to the full.' "'Good enough,' said the general. "'You've got brains. You've got push. I'll do the spade work.' I won't last long enough to push it through. You'll have to follow. Ever been outside of Denv? Reuben stiffened. I'm not accusing you of being a spy. It's really all right to go outside of Denv. I've been outside. There isn't much to see at first. A lot of ground pocked and torn up by shorts and overs from Elay and us. Farther out, especially east, it's different. Grass, trees, flowers, places where you could grow food. When I went outside, it troubled me. It made me ask questions. I wanted to know how we started. Yes, started. It wasn't always like this. Somebody built Denv. Am I getting the idea across to you? It wasn't always like this. Somebody set up the reactors to breed uranium and make plutonium. Somebody tooled us up for the missiles. Somebody wired the boards to control them. Somebody started the hydroponics tanks. I've dug through the archives. Maybe I found something. I saw mountains of strength reports, ration reports, supply reports, and yet I never got back to the beginning. I found a piece of paper, and maybe I understood it, and maybe I didn't. It was about the water of the Colorado River and who should get how much of it. How can you divide water in a river? But it could have been the start of Denv, Elay, and the missile attacks. The general shook his head, puzzled, and went on. I don't see clearly what's ahead. I want to make peace between Denv and Elay, but I don't know how to start or what it'll be like. I think it must mean not firing, 
not even making any more weapons. Maybe it means that some of us, or a lot of us, will go out of Denv and live a different kind of life. That's why I've clawed my way up. That's why I need a young man who can claw with the best of them. Tell me what you think. I think, said Reuben measuredly, it's magnificent. The salvation of Denv. I'll back you to my dying breath if you'll let me. May smiled tiredly and leaned back in the chair as Reuben tiptoed out. What luck, Reuben thought. What unbelievable luck to be at a fulcrum of history like this. He searched the level for Rudolph's apartment and gained admission. To the general, he said, Sir, I have to report that your friend May is insane. He's just been raving to me, advocating the destruction of civilization as we know it, and urging me to follow in his footsteps. I pretended to agree, since I can be of a greater service to you if I'm in May's confidence. So, said Rudolph thoughtfully, tell me about the double. How did that go wrong? The bunglers were Celine and Alman. Celine because she alarmed me instead of distracting me. Alman because he failed to recognize her incompetence. They shall be brain burned. That leaves an 89th level vacancy in my organization, doesn't it? You're very kind, sir, but I think I should remain a maze man, outwardly. If I earn any rewards, I can wait for them. I presume that May will be elected to wear the five stars. He won't live more than two years after that at the rate he's taking drugs. We can shorten it, grinned Rudolph. I have pharmacists who can see that his drugs are more than normal strength. That would be excellent, sir. When he's too enfeebled to discharge his duties, there may be an attempt to rake up the affairs of the double to discredit you. I could then testify that I was your man all along and that May coerced me. They put their heads together, the two saviors of civilization as they knew it, and conspired ingeniously long into the endless night.